J.K. Rowling spins a different tale. Nikita causes a flood. Is she just trying to bail? And Kim may be trading a smaller fish for a whale. I'm Jen from Jen Loves Reviews, and What's Up In Makeup starts now. Welcome to What's Up In Makeup for June 28th, 2020. Let's go ahead and get started with the top industry news. We're starting off with The Body Shop. They've been called out for bullying Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling. It started when Rowling shared a link to an article titled Opinion, Creating a More Equal Post-COVID-19 World for People Who Menstruate. She later tweeted, quote, People who menstruate. I'm sure there used to be a word for those people. Someone help me out. Womben, Wimpund, Woomud. She also tweeted, quote, if sex isn't real, there's no same-sex attraction. If sex isn't real, the lived reality of women globally is erased. I know and love trans people, but erasing the concept of sex removes the ability of many to meaningfully discuss their lives. It isn't hate to speak the truth. The tweets were seen, though, by many as very transphobic, as cisgendered women are not the only ones who menstruate. Some transgender men also do, and some non-binary folk also do. Rowling was prompted to further elaborate via an open letter that was published on Wednesday, but this is where the body shop comes in. They tweeted a photo in response of a red canvas bag that is imprinted with, quote, it's bloody natural, hashtag drop the P word to end period shame. Body Shop also added, quote, hey, at JK Rowling, here's something we made earlier. We thought you might like one. We've also popped in a vegan bath bomb and a copy of Trans Rights by at Paisley Cura for you to read in the bath. Just as JK Rowling was criticized, this was also criticized on social media. One person tweeted, quote, wow, that's appalling. Bullying a woman online is not a good look. Another tweeted, quote, what an incredibly unprofessional tweet from a supposedly ethical organization. Personally, I feel like it's really important to understand reproduction and gender before having that public conversation as such a public persona. But I'm curious to know what you think. Was JK Rowling in the right to you? Or was the body shop in the right? Should they have said anything or just kept their mouths shut? Or do you have a different view? Tell us in the comments. Next up, it looks like Cody's trying to steal away a big name from smaller competitors, Seed Beauty, makers of ColourPop, and Tati Beauty. Cody's currently in talks with Kim Kardashian West over a possible collaboration for certain beauty products. Seed Beauty is now suing KKW Beauty to block Kim from revealing Seed's trade secrets and business practices to Cody. It's really interesting because Seed Beauty began working with KKW around a year after it began manufacturing Kylie Cosmetics, but Seed Beauty also had a similar experience with Kylie Jenner's old parent company, King Kylie, in 2016. Currently, Cody owns 51% of Kylie Cosmetics and Kylie Skin. So what I'm wondering, number one, is why Seed didn't have Kim sign an airtight NDA at the time of her agreement, especially after having difficulty with their agreement with Kylie. And I'm also curious if Kylie's having such a good experience with Cody that maybe she's trying to make the jump and sell KKW as well? Only time will tell. Nikita Dragon posted a video earlier this week and it did not go very well. She was touting an upcoming collab with Norvina, the electric cake liners, as seen in this promotional video. But in this IG story, I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna let her say it. Even if it's not morning, are you guys okay? Are you taking a breath? I know my foot is on everyone's neck right now. My big old stripper heel, my pleaser is on everyone's neck right now. So it is time for me to finally drop my Norvina X Nikita video. I have to tell you, when I first heard that, my jaw just absolutely dropped. I don't know how you could possibly say something like that, given the current climate. It is not a secret what happened to George Floyd with the police officers kneeling on his neck. This was not just an isolated incident in one little county somewhere in America. To me, there is no way she could have said this out loud and not realized exactly what she said. There is a theory that goes around in the beauty community that people like to stir up drama when they're about to launch a product. Well, along with the collab with Norvina, she also just dropped a new color corrector under Dragon Beauty. I know that putting your foot 
foot on somebody's neck is a thing that some people say in different circles but I just don't buy that she didn't realize what she was saying. But I would love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. We have a PSA for you. The FDA recently released a warning about the possibility of toxic chemicals in a hand sanitizer manufactured in Mexico by a company called ESK Biochem. Nine products may contain methanol, which can be poisonous if ingested or absorbed through the skin. The FDA says consumers who've been exposed should seek medical treatment ASAP. Symptoms of exposure include nausea, headache, vomiting, blurred vision, permanent blindness, seizure, coma, irreversible damage to the nervous system, and death. If you realize you have this, please dispose of the item, but of course do not flush it or pour it down the drain. As of June 17th, items were still on the company's site, but when we checked just before filming, the site was temporarily unavailable. And we're not certain at this time where these were sold, if they were only sold online if they were sold through in-store retailers, so please check your labels to make sure you do not have any of this in your home. Biotech startup Cafe Bueno was founded by three friends in Denmark who wanted to create a business model of sustainability. Their goal was to reinvent skincare ingredients with coffee. They extract coffee from used coffee grounds and they claim that the oil can replace argan and rosehip oil in cosmetic formulas. They believe that the coffee bean has plenty more untapped potential ingredients to offer. Global flavor and fragrance company Givoudon partnered with Cafe Bueno to launch Coffee Cup. They signed an exclusive distribution agreement and joint development agreement. One thing that's cool is that the coffee oil made on site decreases the carbon footprint in that they can't, they don't have to bring in ingredients from miles away and they can just manufacture it right there besides using something that is essentially trash to create something that is useful. In addition to that, the current coffee market has an almost 100% waste ratio, leaving most coffee waste in landfills while also creating methane. Personally, I love the idea of using something that was trash to make something useful. It reminds me of in Back to the Future when Doc Brown came back from the future and he took the banana peels and he's like, I need fuel. And then he took the banana peels and put it in his gas tank. Like, is that where we're moving? I sure do hope so. Caffeine has been used in skincare for a while. So I really love the idea of using more coffee oil. And also it's a good marketing thing because coffee is such a popular product right now. So I personally am very, very interested in that. All right, I have a story time for you and I would love to know your thoughts on it. So we had a post in our Facebook group recently telling us of a shopper who incurred the wrath of an Ulta associate for taking a concealer from an unsealed box just to check the color, not to swatch, just to take it the tube out and look at it. In pre-pandemic times, no one would have blinked an eye at this, but now just the act of touching and replacing an item causes panic in some stores. Now we know Ulta and Sephora are no longer allowing shoppers to use testers and gently pushing them toward virtual try-on experiences at home. And in-store, packaging may have already faded or not be accurately printed to begin with to show a shade. The person who made the post in our group went on to say that the Ulta's virtual try-on service is less than stellar in their opinion, and that's the big rub for them. According to Ulta, use of its Glam Lab app has increased by five times in the pandemic, which is 19 million shades tried on. But the problem with the app is that it was launched in 2016, which it's basically a dinosaur at this point. It really needs to be updated. In virtual reality, also the phone screen might act, might not accurately depict the color based on the device's screen density. And plus every human brain sees color differently. And I know you know that Sephora also offers a virtual try-on experience through tutorials through their app. They've also said that when stores reopen or as they reopen, that the beauty advisors will be more available to assist customers via an in-store product demonstration that would replace the testers. Ulta has actually already extended returns to 180 days and Sephora's increased their return policy to 60 days in order to allow people that time window because they can't swatch it in store. But then where does that cost go? If they're getting more returns, is that going to then go back into the brand and now they're going to have to raise prices because of the increase in returns? But going back to the post in the group, I wouldn't have thought about this going into Ulta, but it makes a lot of sense to make sure that we are not taking items 
out of packages, even if we're not opening the product inside, but not even touching the product inside the package. Because what we heard is that Ulta then has to damage out the product if they see you doing that. What I'm hoping to see is that package design evolving and having like the little windows in the front of the box so that you can actually see the product without having to take it out. I mean, we already have that a lot at the drugstore and at grocery stores where a lot of stuff just isn't boxed. They're shrink shrink wrapped or clamshelled or they're just out in the open on the shelves. So what I'm wondering from you is how do you shop right now? Are you mostly shopping online? Are you going into stores? Are you noticing if you are going into stores that you're not able to make as educated of a purchase because you're not allowed to open things, you're not allowed to swatch things? Another thing I'm wondering is do you remember back in the day when you used to go to a Radio Shack and they would have like one item out and you'd have to specifically ask the salesperson to go in the back for you to get the product that you were interested in purchasing? Do you think maybe we're going toward that direction, like the Costco card direction where you have to have somebody like physically get products for you? What a pain in the butt that would be, but it would keep everything safe. I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments. Skincare brand Naturium has been a topic of discussion since going beta on Amazon in October and then launching on its own site in February. Most of that discussion was generated on Susan Yara's YouTube channel, Mixed Makeup, and in her related Facebook group. When asked how she became aware of the brand, Yara replied, they sent me a PR mailer when they launched. And in the video posted last Sunday, we discovered the reason why. Yara revealed that she is part owner of the brand. Here's a quote from Yara, quote, I wanted to create a very serious skincare line and make sure people didn't see it as an influencer brand. I do think I'm different from the average influencer. Not that I think there's anything wrong with influencers. I didn't want anyone to like the brand or to hate it because I'm attached to it. In an interview with Beauty Independent, Ben Bennett of investment firm incubator The Center said, quote, this is Susan's brand. I'm an investor and The Center acts as advisors to her and we are also partners in it. For the same reason that she doesn't want her brand to be seen as a quote unquote influencer brand, I don't want to be seen as somebody developing a business that's a fast revenue grab. My MO and the center's MO is to develop evergreen brands. Even before Yara's reveal, industry sources estimated that Naturium was on track to generate $10 million in its first year sales, with Amazon counting for 40% of the sales and the brand site responsible for the rest. The brand's in negotiations to break into Mastige retail by 2021. Yara's claimed at different times that she wanted to get honest and true feedback, so she chose not to disclose her involvement, and alternatively, that she chose not to disclose due to the pandemic. But there's the FTC to consider now and their rules for social media advertising are clear and easy to follow and she broke them. Yara's now added a disclaimer to each video on her channel where she features the brand, but they were not there when the video was originally released and they still don't really meet FTC guidelines. She could be fined tens of thousands of dollars and she could face a civil suit if it is brought. Feedback on the ownership reveal started out mixed but has since skewed to the side of high criticism. Comments range from manipulative to outright lying. The overwhelming opinion among commenters is that this is a betrayal of trust and that Yara no longer should be trusted. And when you consider the big picture, Yara has done damage to her social media credibility and potentially a disservice to female executives as a whole and tainted the beauty space who are already under contempt because people think that we're a bunch of crud balls anyway, and now she's just added that to it. Now, if you saw my video I put up about this, you've seen that Yara also issued an apology of sorts during which she claims to have only become a co-founder a few weeks ago. This is contradictory to the previous statement in the reveal video about creating the brand from scratch. Also, the statement from her partner, Ben Bennett, leans toward a larger participation in the planning stages than she admits during the apology. I did do a full video on this if you want a deeper dive and to hear from Susan herself in the videos. Please take a look for more on the situation. I hope you enjoyed the newer take on how we did top news, but now it is time to move into the weekly product report to see what was released this week, starting with the Huda Beauty Glow Cocoa Hydrating Mist infused with coconut water, coconut milk, and a hint of coconut oil. It's a whole coconut thing, $35. Sephora Favorites Clean Makeup Set is a multi-branded set of six clean beauty must-haves. Brands included Arcosas, Ilia, Aether Rose, Lila B, RMS Beauty, and Tarte C, $29. 
dollars. And speaking of Tarte C, here's their No Mirror Must Haves color collection featuring a mascara mist and an anytime lip mask. Perfect for traveling, they say, or trying out $22. And coming for July 14th for Rouge and VIB, then July 15th for everyone, Tom Ford's Traceless Soft Matte Foundation has a hydrating silky formula, mood medium to full coverage in 40 shades for $88. Zoeva has their new Sweet Glamour collection at Ulta right now. The blush palette has a cheerful pink trio, including two blushes and a highlighter for $19. Eyeshadow palette includes a mix of 10 fantasy-inspired watercolor pastel shades for $28. And the new Radiant Bronzer, a highlighter, comes in an array of six colorways for light, medium, tan, and deep skin tones, and infused with crystals like Energizing Amethyst, Tourmaline, and Revitalizing Rose Quartz, along with Nourishing Rose Hip Extract, they're $26. And in high-end news this week, from Chantecai comes the Lip Chic Rose Demai in col collaboration with artist John Darian in one of his luminous realistic floral designs. A glossy lipstick with a new light texture and infused with hyaluronic acid, it is $55. For Marc Jacobs, it's the Enamored with Pride Hydrating Lip Gloss Stick in limited edition packaging to celebrate Pride 2020 in five shades for $29. And from last week's late breaks and possibly your shopping cart this week, maybe, it's the Natasha Denona Bronze Collection. Bronze Palette has 15 shadows in bronze inspired shades, $65. Bronze Cheek Face Glow Palette offers sun-kissed dipped in bronze looks for $55. Bronze Collection Lipophoria Gloss and Balm Bundle offers all three balm gloss hybrid shades in tan, nude, chestnut, and caramel for $78. And on the drugstore side this week from Essence, Witch Side Eyeshadow Palette offers up 15 shades with a lighter side and a darker side to fit whatever witch and mood you're in, $14.99. Hello Berlin Eyeshadow Palette has nine matte and shimmer shades inspired by the colors of Berlin for $9.99. Catrice has a new addition to their Bay collection, the Insta Bay Eyeshadow Palette with 12 matte and metallic shades that each have a hashtag for a name, $15. And now let's take a look at what's going on over at QVC and HSN. Do not forget that $3.50 shipping. Laura Geller French Vanilla Highlighter Duo gives a soft, subtle inner glow. It comes with a dual-ended brush and bag for $29.98 or three easy pays of $9.99. Sigma Beauty's Corderosa Shadow Palette is now at QVC. It has 14 shades in multi-finish rose and marigold tones, $49 or three easy pays of $16.33. Bare Minerals More Than Meets the Eye Collection features eight curated shades of loose shadows and cooler tones for $39 or three easy pays of $13. Bobbi Brown Pot Rouge Duo offers creamy shades of terracotta and rose to use on the cheeks or lips, $26 or three easy payments of $8.67. And meanwhile, over at HSN, It Cosmetics Special Edition Grand Collection gives you seven goodies for your summer, including SPF 50 Foundation in your choice of eight shades, blush, contour duo, lip serum, mascara, and two brushes, $97 or three flex pays of $32.33. And MAC has landed at HSN. Check out their site for all the details and kits, but let's take a look at this one. This is the MAC Studio Fix Fluid Foundation and Brush Set with Mini MAC Fix Plus. It gives you that foundation in your choice of 61 shades and provides a matte finish. $66 or three flex pays of $22. And this one does have free shipping. The Corez Greek Kiss Lip Butter Stick Trio adds a hint of color in three yummy shades, Mediterranean Grape, Mulberry, and Thyme Honey, $24 or three flex pays of $8. In Indian cruelty free news this week, Sound Cosmetics has dropped two new lip collections, the organic hemp infused lip glosses in six shades and the organic hemp infused lipsticks also in six shades. $12 each or choose your top three shades of lipstick to make a bundle for $32. Lamora Cosmetics has launched their first ever palette. The high maintenance palette is a combo of 15 shades in matte and shimmer and glitter finishes. It's $42. The LMB Cosmetics is accepting pre-orders for their latest palette called Are You Long? Lost Baby Girl with a dozen shades in a mixture of matte shimmers and glitters in summery hues for $25. And what do you do when you turn 30 and happen to own Spoiled Lips Cosmetics? You launch volume 16 of their R.I.P. palette series and call it R.I.P. My Youth. Then you fill it with pretty and pink shades. 16 for eyes and two for face, now on pre-order for $32. Killer Queen Cosmetics has made their Neon Freak Show collection shades as singles. Choose from seven shades of the water activated and UV receptive paint pots, $8 each. And finally, Glow Addiction's July Beauty Box is now up for purchase. July's box will feature mermaid trio lashes and a mermaid brush set from Shop Eye Beauty, mermaid swirl brush shampoo from Swirl and Sparkle, and other goodies from Beauty Creations and JJ Young now on the Glow Addiction site for $18.99.
Let's hope the storms stay away for next week's holiday. But for now, it's the lightning round sneak peeks in three, two, one. Coming next month from Sydney Grace, Ruby Slippers and new biodegradable glitters, including Angel Dust. Yasmin is making her way to you soon from My Alley Beauty in honor of the owner's mother. Making a comeback in Makeup Maniac sub boxes from July Forward Glitter Lip Attire. Alien Cosmetics drops a look at their sunbathe and soft serve palette, and they also have stellar sunsets on their minds. A few more sneaks of what's coming this fall from Rosewood Cosmetics, coming July 1st from OMFG Cosmetics Cake Liners. Fashion Killer. Cosmetics has a new palette on its way and finally coming soon from Black Cosmetics, the Black Power Palette. In this week's deals at Lancome.com, spend $150 on skincare and use code Mia Prima to receive a Clarisonic Mia Prima for free. Ciate is offering 30% off site wide with code SUMMER30 and June 28th. See the site for terms. Save up to 50% on sale items now at Smashbox.com. NARS is holding their friends and family sale. Use code NARSVIP to save 20% off site wide. Use code SUMMER for 20% off site wide at the Tatcha website. There are some exclusions that do apply. And finally, Dose of Colors is having a 40% off site wide summer sale. Some exclusions do apply and no code is needed. Sale does end tonight at 11.59 Pacific. Here's some late breaking news we thought you'd want to know. Zao Organic Makeup wants you to know that they have limited their in-house operations to a socially distant crew in order to ensure that orders are not only met in a safe and responsible way, but in as timely a fashion as possible. Their customer service continues to work remotely. So if you're a fan of the sustainable, the refillable, or the cruelty-free, or just the pretty things, check them out at ZaoOrganicMakeup.com. Ever wonder how Bitter Lace Beauty cooks up their shimmery goodness? It's a lot like cooking. And take a look at the finished dish coming soon to their site. Boop boop be doop 90s Baby Cosmetics does it again with another cartoon themed palette, 15 matte shimmers and glitters that all embody the spirit of Betty Boop, now on their site for $32, but use code 90s Baby at checkout to get it for $25. L'Oreal has signed an agreement to acquire Thayer's Natural Remedies, which you may know as that witch hazel company. Thayer's has a 170 plus year heritage and has stayed true to its roots with well-loved skincare products while maintaining its core values of social and environmental responsibility. The brand will be integrated into L'Oreal's consumer products division. Maddie Ziegler has been a celeb since the age of eight, from dance moms to see a videos to judge on So You Think You Can Dance, and now she has a collab with Morphe. The new amount Imagination Collection is the result said to be a kaleidoscopic riot of color that includes a 20 shade palette, $25, highlighter stick, $12, and lip and cheek kits in three colorways, $18 on their site now. Rude Cosmetics reveals the upcoming queen palettes with everything you need, shadows, blush, highlight, and high shine gloss coming soon. The fully flavored eyeshadow palette is on the way from Andy Candy Cosmetics set to arrive on July 15th. Tasty. The Melt She's in Parties palette launched Friday with all the plums you're looking for now on their site and coming on the 30th to Sephora $48. Pinky Rose Cosmetics thinks you should pump up the base with their upcoming Nude Perfect Base. Use it as an eyeshadow base, a lip base, or even a full face dropping on July 1st. And finally, The Sims have access to MAC makeup. Check out the Create a Sim area in Sims 4 to find some of their most iconic products and shades available for your characters now. Don't forget that most of the products we talked about today are on the Where to Buy page at our website, whatsupinmakeup.com. And if you like my makeup today, there is also a Getting Ready With Me video over there next Sunday on What's Up in Makeup, more industry news and new products over here, our lovely and talented What's Up in Makeup official reporting team. Their faces are scrolling next to me and the What's Up in Makeup Facebook hunters. Thank you so, so much for all of your hard work this week. And of course, thank you to the ever fabulous Tabitha B for helping me with the new format this week. Thank you so much for putting up with me. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. And thank you very much for getting through this with me. Chat today is at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We're gonna be hanging out, talking about what's happened in the community, talking about makeup. If you'd like to join us, you should go ahead and head over there. But if for some reason you miss it at 10 a.m. Eastern, it's no problem at all. You can go ahead and go over to my channel page and check out the video titled Live Chat. Thank you for watching and getting through What's Been Makeup this week. Another week in the books. I hope you enjoyed it. If this is your first time here, welcome. 
Welcome back. If you have been here before, I know you have so many choices of what you can watch. Thank you so much for watching What's In Makeup. I appreciate you so much. Mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon.